Today on Applied Science, I'm going to show you an unusual Today on Today Applied, on applied science, science, I'm going to show, going to show you an unusual unu Today on Today Applied, applied science, science, I'm going to show you an unusual unu Today on Today on Applied Science, I'm going to show you an unusual unu Today on Today on Applied Science, I'm going to show you an unusual Today on Today on Applied Science, I'm going to show you an unu 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 Today Today on Today on Applied Science, I'm going to show you an unu 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 Today Today on Today on Applied Science, I'm going to show you an unu 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 Today Today on Today on Applied Science, I'm going to show you an unu 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 Today, today, I'm the final sign of the 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 sign
Okay, let me see if you can hear me. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. And um, uh, hold on one second. How do I sound? Good. Good. Sound pretty clear. Okay, great. Um, but I'm hearing myself. Are you hearing yourself now? No. Okay, good. Put the one good. on mute, yeah, so good. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm monitoring us via a second uh, screen. Uh, so just give me one second. I'm trying to get everything ready there. And how do I turn off? So when I look at the, um, uh, hold on one second, let me get this down here. So when I look at the feed on um, the YouTube mirror right now, I see my face, okay, in the corner. And I don't want to see my face in the corner. How do I get rid of that? 
Um, that's going to be a setting on your, probably on your share screen if you hit. Stop video. Yeah. Okay, great. So I go away now. Uh, before I didn't have my video on and I was seeing Ben, but um, yeah. All right. So I pop up and down depending on what happens. But basically, I don't want them to see us because I want them to pay attention to the um, to the video. If we all go off video, does it do that? Uh, well, right now I don't see anything. Right now I just see the feed. Okay. Uh, so that's good. Um, I just don't. I don't want anybody to pop up there while we're trying to watch these movies. You know. Mm-hmm. Um. I'm not sure if uh, this audio may be going out live to YouTube right now as well, just so we know. Hi, everybody. It is. Hello, YouTube, the World Wide web You get the early show, YouTube. <laughs> you All right, then I'm going to post that we're live on social medias now. All right. Yes, and then see, Ben just popped up on the YouTube feed. Uh, he pops up there, and I don't know how to... Um, Am yeah. I on there now? Uh, you just popped up. Yeah, you're just popping up. So when you say that, you pop up there. Uh, is when it... we speak. Yeah. So hot, not high floating media controls. Uh, not disable attendee annotation, right? That's not it. Um... Uh, let me see here. Zoom controls. Aha, uh -huh. and now it pops everything over here. I don't want that. I want this. And uh, when I play that game, it restarts everything. There we go. Um, all right, there could be more technology, but I'm not sure how. Um, so I guess we'll just make the best of it. How about that? That's all we can do. Yes. Oh, so people are joining. They're in the meeting now. Everybody's in, right? Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, if you can see me, we're going to get going in just a couple minutes.
Hi, everybody. I hope that you can hear me. Uh, can everyone hear me? Somebody uh, write in the chat that you can hear me okay. Okay, great. Well, everybody, welcome to screenings for spring 2020. Yeah! You made it. You all made it here. I know that it has been a crazy semester that you all have worked extremely hard. Even if you're just an audience member, I know that it has been crazy for you. But we are here together uh, in an effort to watch these wonderful filmmakers make films. Some of these films were made before we went into the COVID-19 lockdown. Other films were made after lockdown, which means student filmmakers were trying to make these films with very, very little resources. This is art in desperate times for sure. And we couldn't do it uh, without the support of a number of people, especially today. Um, I wanna thank our Dean, Brenda Treadle, our department chair, George Jaber, Professor Michael Watt, Brandon Eunice, and guest professors, Bev Carmo, she came in and helped uh, in some of our classes. Of course, prior to the lockdown, big ups to our ed techs, Brendan Smith and Paige Lakovic, could not have gotten to where we are without them. And of course, today, everything that the student life folks are doing, Rob uh, Valela, um, Ben Williams, Kate Farmer, and make sure you give it up for our interpreter, Cheyenne. Yeah, Cheyenne, right? Okay, so let's get into it. Um, first up, I wanna show a selection of material and give a chance for our uh, FLM 404 culminating experience students to show their projects. The culminating experience is the final course that our students take in our program. And so it's a big deal for the students. Um, and these are some of the early semesters for us to offer that course. So it's, it's been a little crazy. <laughs> of course, um, trying to make films in this environment, like I said, is difficult. Um, in that course, uh, you either have to make your own film or dig deep into a particular job in filmmaking. Um, all of our FLM 404 students must spend time mentoring new newer students. They have to work towards certification on an industry tool or program, and they have to keep a log or a diary of their work. So we're going to be seeing and hearing from them all today. But first up, Mark Brady. The guy made a movie. He directed, he produced, he wrote a film. He had help with the writing a little bit from his co-stars in the film. The movie is called Broken Bits, and I'm so excited to present it to you. Mark has worked so hard. So, I'm gonna share the screen and let's check out Broken Bits by Mark Brady and a lot of other students in CCAC's program. In the lion exhibit? Like at the zoo. Yeah, dude, where else is the lion exhibit at? Bullshit. No way. Bullshit. No way. True story. Scout's honor. That's a true story. Just one second, there is a technical difficulty. One second.
So what? In the lion exhibit? Like at the zoo? Yeah, dude. Where else is the lion exhibit at? Bullshit. No way. Bullshit. No way. True story. Scout's honor. That's a true story. All right. Well, you know, I don't have any stories, so. Well, you got to have some story. Yeah, your life isn't very exciting, is it? Um... Oh, oh, what about the time you lost your virginity? That's a pretty good story, and I haven't heard it in a while, so. Yeah, okay, well, I'll tell it again. So, it was it was me and Becky Anderson, right? It was the last day of 10th grade, and we were up inside my treehouse. Wait, 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 wait. Did you say Becky Anderson? It was you and Becky Anderson. Yeah. <laughs> the chick with the Ninja Turtle toes. Uh-huh. The Ninja Turtle Toes, dude. We used to make fun of her all the time for it. Um, That's mean. It was pretty funny, though. Um, oh, man. Oh, my. She had uh, web toes or web feet. It's a legitimate medical condition. Dude, she could probably swim really fast. She did swim fast. She was on the swim team, and her times were great, harnessing turtle energy in each stroke. Can I get back to my story, please? I, I guess. All right. So, we were making out for about 15, 20 minutes, all right? And then I reached my hand up there, and I unhooked oh, the bra. One hand. One, one handed. One handed. No way. That's a lie. The lion exhibit, true. That lie. That's impossible. It's my story, dude. Can I just tell it? Okay. All right. Thank you. Liar. Okay. Well... You know, I unhooked her bra, one-handed, okay. and you know, I, and the rest is history. Okay, so you're gonna you're gonna lie and leave out the best part of the story. That was the best part. No, it's not the best part. Yeah, it is. The best part of the story is when your neighbor got sent to jail for filming you guys. That is the best part. Okay, well, to be fair, I mean, if we were only one year older then it wouldn't have been child pornography. There's no to be fair there, dude. That's pedophilia. All right, we'll try to look at it from his point of view. His perspective? I'm not a pedophile. I'm yes. not gonna look at it from his yes. perspective. Guys, you're not gonna believe what just happened. What? Did Betty White die? Oh, Betty White, no. That chick from Facebook, she just messaged me and wants to go on a date tomorrow. Oh, sweet, yeah. dude. That's awesome, <laughs> right? right? But, what? what? Does she look like a butt? Man, go to hell. You know she looks good. No, Come no, she, now. Looks like she looks no, like a butt. No, she looks bad, yeah, doesn't she? Looks she looks bad. Okay, whatever, whatever. Hey, I just got a 30 rack that I definitely didn't steal. You guys ready to get hammered or what? Hell yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. Why wouldn't you leave man, with that? Does a homeless man shit in the woods or what? That's gross, but why don't we get out of here? Instead? Lead, yeah, dude, lead with the go. beer next time. Let's dude. go, yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. All right, you guys ready? Ooh. Oh yeah, baby! Oh, you know that's a yeah. twelve pack, though, right? Not a thirty rack. Yeah, I never look. <laughs> you boys still ready to get fucked up? Oh yeah. yeah. Computer, play uncopyrighted music. Play uncopyrighted music.
Shut up! We're trying to sleep. What's wrong with you? I don't. Hey, why are you crying, dude? Come on. I'm not sure I understand, bud. What? Come on, it's not that bad. What do you mean your dick isn't working? Oh no! I just woke up from a bad dream. And then I went to the bathroom and my, my, it's like someone turned off my little mark. <laughs> Wait, why would you dream that? I don't know, Tyrell. My dick isn't working, you flat top piece of okay, shit. Okay, okay, all right. There's no need to offend the flat top, all right? We just... Maybe just tell us just a little bit more about your dream, oh, no. maybe, buddy? Okay. Well... Uh, there was this girl, and she was dressed in all black, and there was chanting and symbols, and oh, then I just look up. Oh, shit. What? What? Sounds like witchcraft to me. So? So means you're freaking cursed, dude. Come on. Like my dick has a curse on it. Oh, God! That sounds like you're a little boy. Oh, fuck you, Porky. <laughs> oh, listen, listen. Oh, boy. All right, well, if you are cursed, I know I know of some people that can help us out, okay? We, we can get it fixed. We can get it fixed, buddy. You know, I, I usually recommend that we do this separately. No, we're we're kind of like a team, three musketeers sort of thing yeah, going we, on. We, we do stuff together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, fine. Let's get started then, shall we? Father, Son, Holy Dude, Spirit. What are you doing? Isn't that what you're supposed to do? No, idiot. Tell him about the curse. Hmm. A curse. Okay, so yeah, um, I woke up. I had this weird dream, and now my di my car no. My peen, my my man, my 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 manhood isn't working. Oh, oh good lord! Yeah. So you mean you can't get an erection? Whoa! Is he allowed to say that? Just say what? Erection. Listen, you may need to see a doctor. This is not my area of expertise, but I'd uh, recommend Viagra. No, okay, no, no, okay, no. First off, I don't need Viagra, all right? I'm not old. And second, I'm pretty sure I have a curse on my dick, so I think you need to perform an exorcism. A dickcercism? All right, that's enough. I think it's time for the tree is to be going. Now! So, what, like Three Hail Marys? Oh, or? get out! Okay, 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 okay. okay, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. Get, move, get, move that just, way. Just, you might have to give get, us a second. We're kind get, of stuck. Just stop. No, stop. Just stop. Get We're man spreading me. Stop, stop get, touching me. Oh, stop dude, it. Yeah, wait, get, Lord. Uh, uh, well, that was a waste of time. I'm not going to take those pills. I refuse. Well, you're not a pill popper yet. I think I've got another idea. Well, is it porn? Because I already tried that. Oh my god, no, dude. It's not porn, idiot. Come on, just follow me. I got an... Alright, All right, sweet. Pentagrams are done. We're ready to get started. Are these things supposed to be made out of salt or something? Salt? Are you kidding me? Do you know how expensive salt is? Yeah. Flour's way cheaper. Yeah, that makes sense. It'll be fine. All right. Are you sure this is actually safe? Yeah, dude, I've seen him do it a thousand times. Trust me, you're totally safe. What? All the time, all the dude. Time. I do this all the time. All right. Yeah. All right. Get in there. Come on. Let's do it. Prepare yourself. Oh, whoa, hey! Whoa! Whoa! whoa, 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 whoa. Oh my God! Oh my God! What? What are you doing? Don't I have to be naked for the sacrifice? Sacrifice? No. What? No, we're not my killing goodness. anything, dude. Nothing's being sacrificed here. I'm in a pentagram. That doesn't matter. Oh Pull your God. pants back up. Okay. Oh my God. Dude. By the way, dude, you really gotta shave. My goodness. I don't have any clippers. Dude, oh my god. Oh my god, I don't care. Never do that again. Never pull your pants down in front of me again. Oh my god. Okay. Alright, eggs, eggs. By the way, 
need to ask you something. What? Why did we bring raw eggs again? Are you serious? We went over this. What? Mark ate my cereal the other day. Like the whole box. How do, how do you eat how do you eat all of it in one sitting? Right, so we're gonna make him breakfast. I get it. No, he ate my breakfast, dude. We're gonna take these eggs, we're gonna hit him in his stupid face. Right. Okay. What yeah. About. yeah, I'm chanting. Don't worry mm. about it. Chanting, chanting, ritual chanting. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Close your eyes, prepare yourself. Okay. Oh! Oh, yeah. Oh, Are these God. eggs? Yeah, it's all oh, part yeah. of the ritual, don't worry. Is it, oh, is it working? I don't know, it's oh. not my dick. Oh, oh, I'm not hard yet, so I don't think it's working. Oh! Oh, you sure you know what you're doing? Yeah. Er, no. What? Oh! In my time of need. That's what you get, dude. You ate my Captain Crunch. My name was on the box, you bitch. Curse. Curse me? I curse you. You can't curse me. Yes, I do. Have fun trying to use your dick now, buddy. Oh, you can't secondhand curse me, bitch. Stop. Why did you do that? You're getting egg on me. Stop Good. it. Stop it. Yo, guys, check it. That shit from Facebook messaged me last night. Let what? What? Uh -huh. go. Uh -huh. Look at me. I haven't yeah, seen her yet. talking about that day tonight. Check it out. Don't touch me again. Oh, dude, she is really hot. She... Yeah. She looks pretty familiar, though. Oh, dude, no way. I know, right? Hot. D no, turtle toes. Turtle toes? Becky Anderson? Wait, the chick from high school? Yeah, dude, that's crazy. We were literally just talking about her. Yeah, let's creep I mean, on her profile. She's still bad, though. Is that? Are those, are those tarot cards? Yeah, isn't that like magic or something? Uh -huh. Dude, no way. She's a witch, dude. That's witch shit. She heard you with her witch ears, and now she cursed you. Guaranteed. Holy shit, dude. That's probably exactly what... Oh my god, that's exactly yes. what happened. Yes! Crap. Oh dude. god. What? Mm, what are we gonna do? Well, wait, 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 wait. You're going on a date with her. Yeah. Yes, yes. So you convince her to uncurse Mark. You seduce her and tell her to uncurse him. How the hell is he supposed to do that? Tyrell isn't very seductive. Oh, come on. I can be seductive. No, I got stop some that. Moves. Stop what? that. What? what are you doing? That no, no. Gross. You're not seductive to a witch. Well, then what's seductive to a witch? Um. I know what can be seductive to a witch. All right, stop with seductive. Stop it. A wizard. What? That makes total sense, because wizards bang witches all the time. You guys are so dumb. In what world? It's common knowledge, actually. What? Yeah. No way. That's going to work. No way. He doesn't know any magic. He's no, not a wizard, that's dude. That's the best part, dude. He doesn't have to know magic. All we have to do is dress him up like a wizard, and she won't know the difference. That's genius. Thank I love you. it. Thank you. No, it's not. Where are we finding a wizard costume at this time Shit. of the year? I don't think I, I didn't think of that. Yeah, exactly. Of course you didn't. Wait a second. I might know a guy. Let me take. Let me make a call or two. Okay. Too. Sure. All right. Well, I'm gonna shower because I'm covered in. Please, egg boy, go. I don't know, guys. I'm pretty nervous. This is my first drug deal after all. Drug deal? Are you kidding, dude? We're not buying drugs. We're buying a costume. This guy doesn't sell drugs either, right? Well, I mean, people can sell more than one thing, right? Oh, Jesus Christ. Hey, how'd you know his name? His what? name is Jesus Christ? Did you walk out of water? No, no, his mom was a stripper named Mother Mary. Oh. Ew! Oh my God. Gross! <laughs> that has to be him, right? It looks like oh, Jesus. Snap. Yeah, it does. All right, yeah. oh, come on. Are you Jesus? Me? No, I am not Jesus, all right? This is the third time this week. That's offensive. Offensive. Yeah, that clearly wasn't Jesus. What? Dude, that looked exactly like Jesus. He really no. did. That guy was white. Jesus is from the Middle East. He can't be Caucasian. I don't, I don't know. I, the, the Catholic Church says he is a white man. 
and you believe the Catholic Church, they couldn't even fix Mark's dick problems. Come on now. Yeah, he's got a point there. Hey, Terrell. What is this, you're calling me Jesus? How many times have I told you it's Jesus Christ? You're right. So you're the guy that's supposed to help us out with our costume issue? That's right, I'm the guy. Got it right here. Cool. Uh, so, great, what are we talking? Are we talking like Gandalf, Merlin, Dumbledore? Gandalf would be sick. Oh, yeah. Wizard. Yeah. Yeah. You said lizard. This is Godzilla. He, King of the God monsters. Are you freaking kidding me, Tyrell? How is a lizard costume supposed to help us in this situation? Hey, she could be attracted to lizards too. You don't know. Becky Anderson might be a freak, but she's definitely not attracted to reptiles. Ophidiophile is the word you're looking for. That's gross. How do you know that, man? That's gross. I have an extensive vocabulary and I'm well read. It's, it's a technical term. I'm not gross. No, you're gross. No, that's what? weird. I don't think that's All right, well, yeah. We need a wizard costume. Well, I guess I, I've got a bunch back in my place. You could come pick one of those out. No, I'm not comfortable with that. Nah. I don't think I want to go there. Yeah. I don't think I want three strange guys at my place. But you want a wizard costume, and I have them. In fact, I'll even let you keep the Godzilla costume on the house. And uh, you uh, can come pick one out. It's probably the best deal we got. Yeah, so I like Godzilla. Dan right around the corner. Come on, boys. Why do you smell like nannies? Damn. Are, are you getting evicted? <laughs> no, that's my landlord. He, uh, he keeps pulling this prank like every month or so when I don't pay my rent. All right, so you boys, make yourself comfortable. Make yourself at home. I'm going to head upstairs, get the costumes, and... Uh, be right back. <laughs> yeah, where you keep them next to the sex dolls? Yes. Oh. What did you say this guy did for a living, Tyrell? Dude, I'm honestly not sure myself at this point. Yeah. The smell. The smell. Dude, this place is disgusting. Why did we come here? I don't know. Why does he have so Can't many open enough. jars of mayonnaise open? What's up with that? You think he's eating it? Oh, I hope so. I don't like the alternative to a bunch of open mayo jars. Mm. Oh, no. He's... he's banging it. He's banging it. Maybe. Ew. Dude, I can't God. be affiliated with someone who bangs mayonnaise. It's not good for me. All right, guys. Well, it's not we, good for my image. We don't know for sure. What do you mean? Been... There's a sock in that one. I saw the sock, yeah. All right, here you go, boys. Here you go. You're a wizard, Harry. Awesome, thank you. Uh, what do I owe you? Don't worry about it. I, uh, it's on the house. I can't legally charge for that costume anymore. Oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, I guess we should be heading out this way. Then. Yeah. 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 Wait. Before we go, I gotta know. The mayonnaise. Do you eat that? Do I eat the mayonnaise? Yes. No, I do not. Oh, oh Jesus Christ! Oh. Okay, All right. thank we gotta you, get sir. Right Thanks. Bye. Oh. And it's pronounced Jesus. Tyrell, are you in position? What is your status? Over. I'm not sure I get it. Why are you wearing that? What the costume? Yes, dude. What else would I be talking about? Well, we have this whole plan, right? Now Tyrell's wearing a costume, he looks cool. Yeah. We had an extra costume, I felt like I needed to wear it. But there's not three. I don't get a costume and I look dumb now. Dude, we'll get you a costume, okay? From where? I don't know. I'm not going back to Mayo Man. Neither are you. Oh my god, dude. Guys, I'm in position. Dude, shut up. I wasn't even saying anything. Tyrell, do you see the target? Over. Yeah, I think I see her. She doesn't really look like a witch, though. That's her biggest trick. Trust me. Tyrell, is that you? Ah, uh, yes. Hey. You uh, you probably didn't recognize me in this um costume I got on. Um, uh, not at first. I didn't. It's, um, it looks good. Ah, thank you. 
Guys, I think it's working. So, a restaurant. Seems a little much for a first date, don't you think? Yeah, I had to improvise a little bit, you know. You know, I'm, uh, I'm sort of into magic, too. Oh, really? What, uh, what type of magic are we talking here? Um, tarot cards, health spells, curses. Oh my god! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Tyro, keep her going! Keep her going, dude! Oh, curses. That sounds pretty cool. Uh, what kind of curses? The bad kind. So, how do you know Marcus Brasley said you two are friends on Facebook? Yeah, Mark! That's my buddy. We catch up from time to time, I guess. You guess. So, it's not like you would be talking to him through that ridiculous earpiece. Oh, shit! Dude! We're compromised! Abort! We're compromised. Abort! Yes, Abort! Get out of there! Get out of there! So you did curse him. You're damn right I did. And if he was any sort of man, he would come in here and face me. What are you gonna do? I have to go in, dude. No, no, you can't do that. I have to be the man my mama raised me to be. I'll back you up for mama. Thanks, dude. Let's make our moms proud. <laughs> You wanted me? Well, I'm right here, Turtle Toes. Why are you dressed like a dinosaur? Why'd you curse me? Huh? <laughs> because you have been spreading rumors about me for five years. That's why. Oh, oh, you mean the, uh, you mean the Turtle Toes thing? No, that was Porky. That wasn't me. Dude, what the hell? She's gonna go and curse me now. No, because you told people that we had sex in your treehouse. I didn't even like you in high school. You just followed me around everywhere and you were always sweating. It was weird. You lied to us. You're a dirty liar. Yeah. Yeah, I lied. That was a lie. But like, what about, what, what about like the, the neighbor and getting arrested? No, no, Mr. Jenkins, no, he was a really nice guy. Uh, he just died of a heart attack. You're terrible. I hate you. Are you serious? You're gross. Okay, yep, yeah, you're, you're right. I'm sorry. I'll stop spreading rumors about you. Just please, make my dick work again. Excuse me? My dick. You cursed it. I didn't put a curse on your genitals, you freak. Then why would my dick not work? Okay, that is a question for a doctor, not me. I put a personal curse on you. You're just supposed to make you sad. That would make sense. I am pretty sad. Yeah, you're sad as hell. You really are. Look, I matched with your friend on Facebook and set this whole thing up because I wanted to see you in person and ask you to stop like an adult. Why, why wouldn't you just message me? Because you blocked me on literally everything when I asked you to stop. Yeah, no, that, yeah, that rings a bell. Yeah, I did do that. Okay, all right, fine. I'll unblock you. I'll stop spreading rumors about you. Just please. Uncurse my dick. Again, I can't do that. See a doctor. But if I find out that you're still spreading rumors about me, I'm going to sue your ass off. So what now, guys? I, don't I guess know. we're back to step one. Yeah. I mean, hey, we were kind of right. She was almost a witch. Yeah, almost. Uh, I guess but so. My dick still doesn't work, so. Yeah. Um. I think I have an idea. We take you to an actual doctor, and then, I don't know, we go get blackout drunk. That's what we're good at, yes. right? I, I like really like that idea. That, yeah. That's a great idea. Let's go. Let's do it. Let's go. All right. Let's go, guys. Let's get drunk. So, uh, you want to go back to my fridge, or what? So what did the doctor say? What doctor? Oh, whenever you went to get your problem downstairs checked out? Oh, yeah, no, that. No, I'm fine. Apparently the doctor just said I masturbate too much. My little guy must have been all tucked it out. Oh, that's gross. How much is, like, 
too much, though. What, like on average? A day? Uh, yeah, I guess. Eight or nine times a day. Wow. What are those low numbers? Um, yeah. No. No, no. How do you how do you find that much time to do that? It only takes like two minutes. So, if you lied about the treehouse story, are you still are you still a virgin? No, guys. I'm not a virgin. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Chug, 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 chug. All right, give it up for Mark Brady, huh? Right? That's incredible. Broken Bits, uh, that is by far the longest uh, short that any student at CCAC has produced. It was a giant team, an incredible effort. Mark, are you with us? Mark, are you here? Mm -hmm. I am. If I'm um, I can see you. Can I hear you? Hold on one second, Mark. Let me make sure I can hear you. Um, go ahead, Mark. Say hello one more time. Hello, everyone. Mark Brady. Um, Mark, tell us a little bit about what you did. I know you've got some pictures to share about how you made this film. I'm going to pull them up right now. Just want to start talking about um, about your film and how you made it. Yeah, well, you know, it just started. Uh, uh, me, Pierce, and Tarot, like three three main characters. Uh, we just got together one day and we just started bullshitting ideas for scripts and eventually we just started writing it and I mean I realized I had to do a final project and I was like well if we're going to do this we might as well you know actually do it so I mean we just went with the idea and we rolled with it and we kind of left the script uh kind of left the script up in the air as far as like dialogue goes so we could like I mean we could bullshit with each other while we were doing the shots and I think I think I had a lot of fun with it. I know everyone that working on it was, I mean, was having fun with it as well. Sweet. Well, let's show a little bit of this. Um, let me let me just pull this up here. Uh, I'm going to share the screen uh, so that we can see. Uh, you included some uh, some behind the scenes photos. You just want to take us through some of these pictures. Yeah, so this is just my uh, assistant director and basically producer, Jen. Uh, we are just, these are like the meetings we'd have each week. We would uh, meet, at least try to meet once a week for a few hours, if not just like an hour or so, and just try to prepare as much as we could because we knew it was going to be like a pretty big job to do, like assemble a team and whatnot. Uh, yeah, so this is the... Uh, this is the uh, confession scene. I actually had help and did most of the work on this confessional. I had to paint it and get it all ready to go. Um, let me get this out of the way. And of course, Madison Sample was awesome. She did great. Very scary. We made it. We, we actually have the uh, nightmare scene and the confessional scene. They're in the same space. And it, it, it actually worked out pretty well. I don't think you could tell at all during the movie. I think it looked pretty scary. Nice. Uh, let's go to the next page. All right, so we are actually at my apartment, which 
isn't a very big apartment so we were cramped we had to do a bunch of reorganizing um but yeah i mean they just showed up i actually slept in that day and everyone was waiting outside for like a good half hour so that's good um but yeah that's, that's my apartment if you're curious this is the egg scene obviously and before this film i actually didn't realize how much eggs hurt when they get hurled at you at a five foot distance but it wasn't i had welts on my arm it wasn't very fun after the scene but you know i just had to take one for my own movie i wasn't going to write a script and have someone else get pelted and hurled eggs at so you know <clears throat> this is the restaurant scene uh you, you can see pierce is having a good time on all the scenes um we were actually lucky enough to get uh the cracked egg uh, available to us after hours. Uh, our my DP Grant Walsh was actually a manager there at one time, so he had the connection to be able to work there. And it, it was just a great location. It was exactly what we needed. And yeah, thank you for my thank you for my team. I know we did a lot. You guys did a lot for me, and I'm really I'm really gracious. Nice, nice. Um... Great job, buddy. Uh, let me uh, stop sharing for a second. Uh, does anybody have any questions for Mark? If you um, if you have some questions, if you write them in the chat, uh, Mark can respond to them now. Um, I don't know if any of you have a question for Mark. Um, you see well, me the whole time, or was I blank the whole time? You were blank, but I see you now. Okay, um, sorry about that. I, I guess uh, before we move on, Mark, the one question I have is is um, um, you know, it, your piece is nearly 30 minutes. Did you know that going in or did things just evolve as you were doing it? No, uh, I was not expecting it. I was expecting it to be maybe like at most 20. Uh, it just kind of happened. We'd get on set. We'd go through the lines a couple of times, get a couple of usable takes. And then we just kind of roll with the characters and the lines because the characters are basically ourselves just exaggerated. Um, and it was, just, it was just fun to do. We had a lot of fun doing it. And it just kind of kind of happened that it was almost 30 minutes long. Okay, great. Um, uh, how, did you, um, how did you get such great chemistry? You know, some, uh, one of the, the comments that I'm hearing is that, you know, the actors had great chemistry. Veronica White saying that. How did you, how did you develop a, a, a good working relationship with the talent? Well, luckily, uh, they're some of my best buddies down here. I and mean, we've just been in the film program together for two years now. And we just, you know, we always wanted to write a script together. We haven't really done anything like this before. And we just decided to go all out and just be ridiculous as possible. Nice. Um, sweet. All right. And um, uh, let me see if I have any other questions for you here. Uh, P oh. Um, were you at St. Sylvester's Church? A uh, 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 question came in from YouTube. Yeah, yeah, we were. Uh, it's actually like less than a minute right down the street from my apartment. And did we have, you know, permission to be there? No, but we, we showed up there, shot for like five minutes, got the hell out of there. And that's that's about it for that. <laughs> Dangerous, always, you know, when you're shooting without a permit, it's always very dangerous, but it was a low stakes shoot. Yeah, it was just like, let's just say, like, we have one line each. Let's just say it and move on. And you can't see, I mean, this person obviously knows it's it's St. Sylvester's, but most people couldn't tell. Yeah. Did you have a problem with any crew cast ruining takes with laughter? Yeah, mostly me. Um, I feel like there was a lot of laughing involved, but I feel like when we were like, all right, well, we're running behind. We got to, we got to get this done so we can move on. I think most of the talent was able to get their shit together so we can move on. But when we knew we had time is when all the bad takes came in because we just, it, it, we just knew that we had time and we were just laughing too hard and like couldn't keep a straight face most of the time nice awesome 
Well, great job, Mark. Uh, uh, lots of comments in the chat and on YouTube. I encourage you to check them out. Uh, what's next for you, Mark? Well, after this semester, I, I'll get my certificate in the film technician program. Um, I've, I'm like almost done with my Adobe Resolve certificate in editing. You mean DaVinci Resolve? Yeah, a DaVinci Resolve, yeah. Um, I'm going, uh, we're going to, I know we're going to start a podcast, uh, me, Pierce, and Toro. We're just going to start a podcast and uh, just have fun with that. And we're also going to work on some skits, just short videos, not half hour videos, just short comedy videos. And we're going to do like a wide variety of stuff with those just to get different kinds of experience and genres under our belt. And hopefully they're career builders or uh, resume builders. So that's what my plan is for like over the summer and maybe throughout the next year. I love it, Mark. Congratulations to you and your entire team. It's incredible work. Um, let's Thanks. move on. Um, next up, uh, it's uh, uh, Christian Cross. Uh, Christian focused this semester as part of his FLM 404 project uh, working as a director of photography. Um, so uh, Christian worked in both, uh, in part doing corporate work, corporate video work in his internship, and also shooting student films and independent projects. So Christian, are you out there? Are you, are you with us? Um, let me find you here. Uh, Christian Cross, there you are. I'm going to unmute you. Christian, can you hear us? Yes, can you hear us? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can see you. Okay, great, Christian. Uh, I'm going to pull up your presentation here. Why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, your efforts uh, this semester and, and how, um, how it worked out for you? All right. Um, so let me just pull this up. I'm going to share the screen. Go ahead, buddy. Tell us what you can. All right. Um, you can go to the next screen. Uh, my name is Christian K. Cross. That's my awful name. Uh, I've been here at CCC for about almost two years now. Um, so I went to an uh, internship at UPMC in the down, uh, downtown Pittsburgh with uh, my good buddy, my friend John, and John, one of my supervisors, to uh, help me to get a good hour. And um, I've been working with them for a while, beginning January to now after the COVID-19, we, we have a closing uh, issue thing. Um, but the cool thing is that I did met them before, before I come to school here. I, I visited them and I met them and I have a conversation and we have an agreement to institute with them in, after I finish school. Um, but that, that's what's going on. Um, on that person when you see they had the different um different uh, powerpoint when the people have interview or a uh, presentation they all had to memorize every word they had to know they had an ipad and a little mirror on it and they can like start talk about it in the screen slow or fast or whatever you can do and you can start over again anytime you like next 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 one um i went to uh this is the studio this is really small studio. It's really different. Um, they have an office. It's uh, they have another place in Auckland. We got to go to a different location. And um, I uh, this is John. This photo and this is screen screen. They have a small camera, your own, uh, your personal camera and uh, lighting. Uh, my team. Uh, there was, um, I would say about five people in my team. So it was me, Tom, John, and I forgot it was two other people. Um, they uh, come to this room and we interview every doctor in this Pittsburgh. We interview about uh, flu and we start interview about how you get curved and uh, how to get feel better and all that. And that's how we do. And that's what I've been working with them for the project. And um, another thing is I went to another location. It's a different place in downtown. Uh, there was a guy named Nick, and um, I borrowed one of his camera equipment that I went to presentation for uh, and then for Martin Luther King to celebrate that day. And uh, there was really crowded people there. I mean, like, it could be like, I would say a thousand people, and I couldn't even 
walk through and a lot of people walk by and they walk past this guy in the photo. Um, I, I, um, I haven't had a chance to talk to him, but he, he asked me a couple of things, asked me what I'm going to do next couple year. And I asked him like, I hope I could work with you guys and all that. And um, we interviewed why he opening for separate and, and for Michael Luther King and he explained about the project and all that. Uh, next slide. So Freeland is a bit different. I learned a bit new thing. Um, so I went to Pittsburgh, Pitt University in College. Uh, one of my good friends, Nick Kobe, he was one helping me for the sound and I offered him um, to you know, come with me. And um, so I had to bring my own camera equipment. You gotta bring your own camera, you gotta bring your own sound equipment, you gotta bring your own lighting, all that to uh, put things in this classroom. Uh, classroom with other people and I, <laughs> I have no idea what she was talking about in this meeting because I was so focusing on this camera make sure it's recording and hit every time um, they do pay you and um, they pay you at least about a hundred so it depends how long it, this presentation is so if it's two hours or three hours then I would have more money for that price and um, they do email you back and forth I mean no matter what freelance do I uh, one of my good friends, John, he helped me to contact this person to to get the get notice about me. So this woman came up to me, emailed me, and we have a nice conversation for a couple of months from January to almost end of the month of January. And we, we talked back and forth telling me what was who I am, what I'm from, um, just you know each other a little bit more and telling me what kind of equipment I have. We talk about like what you can help each other and, and all the things. We just you know, keep talking to each other. And um, finally, I finished all her work. I sent her a clip, all the footage that she need. And then I told her, whatever she need, call me, contact me if you want to work with me again. Um, she had my influence and she can send it to everyone else. Next slide. So there's three different cameras that I learned over the past from beginning of January to now. My own camera is from on the left. I don't know if you see the opposite, so it's probably on the right for you guys. But on this camera on the left, it's mine. I got this. I just got this from Christmas. Um, my dad bought this. It, it's okay. I don't like it, but I learned my lessons that I have to pick my own my own thing. What I need to know because the reason is that for the uh, speaker that we uh, they don't have the special place to plug into my camera. So I had to buy the extra one to get the next wire to plug in and set it up. And then on the middle, this is one from UPMC camera, they normally use. It's really heavy and I hate it so much, but I, I drink it and I learn about it. Um, there's, there's a lot of things that I don't know about this. They have a weird headphone to to plug in and I can't hear it. So in the next time when I work with them, I had to bring my own headphone so I can hear myself. And another thing is they have a speaker on that, right on that camera. I don't know if you can see that, but it's like the little speaker right there, they connect to the camera. And then they, you can hear from hearing a uh, headphone. But that's the reason why I couldn't hear that so hard. But the good thing is my friend Nick, uh, Nick who from New Pimp Scene off, is to say it's okay. It's just, Tell me the sound is working and all good. And it's funny thing is a lot of people thought you could just walk by and say, hi, I'm on the TV. But like, no, it's, it's not for that. It's an advertise on the website, their website at UPMT. And, and they just do the thing. And we just interview this guy. And it, it's funny that people just walk past. And I have to like tell them like, hey, can you like not walk past? I'm trying to get that face for him, but some people don't listen, but I just move on, I just go to a different location, different place, but I don't complain about it. And then on the left, on the right, that's when the school is at CKC. We got, we use that all the time. And um, I use that 4K for a Nick, uh, Nick and Kobe project. And I, I love this. This is one of my favorite cameras at all. And and um, I wish I can get those students in the future. Um, so behind the scene, so uh, this movie is about three frog, all right? Um, the problem is that we could have finished the movie and I, I'm just sad for that uh, because the Esther virus thing happened. 
but uh, we couldn't finish the movie. We only have to do one more scene, just one more day, and we're good. And um, and I fortunately we finally finished the studio in the bedroom. This is one of my favorite best day ever. Um, one of my good friend Chris and the other people who helped me. Jen was the one who produced the studio. I mean, it's amazing. I, I mean, I, I can't even stop think about it. And I thought about it every day and I was like, wow, this is awesome. So this is, this is one of my challenges. We have to shoot in one small room. And it's a lot of actor and all the crew have to be in the back of the room. And it was me and Chris, mostly Chris is one of my sister's camera and he was one helping me all day. And I, I couldn't stop thanking him. I mean, the way he told me idea, his good a angle in there. And I, I, for me, for my life, I love to niche with people. I like to hear their opinion. If people have a bad idea, I'll go with it. We see how they work. That's who I am. I, I, that's what I like. I like to work with teams. That's how we got a best day. We shoot a good day. We shoot every scene. And here's one thing I learned too. I forgot to turn on the sound. And um, that's the worst thing I, I I did not even think. We were shooting, shooting, shooting. And, and, and we were done shooting. And I was like, oh no, I forgot about the sound. And and now it'd be harder for Nick to hear that uh, and all in this movie. But um, I hope we can like fix it again sooner and later. But um, this is, and when in the bottom one in this photo, we went to, to uh, back up the park where down hill, uh, it was really cold day. That's the day before we start closing lockdown. And we would have been shooting and um, we, we have a lot of fun. It was a lot of lab, it was a lot of good angle there. It was freezing, my hand was red. And I was like, I should bring my glove. I should bring a hat with me. I should bring everything. But good thing all my team bought extra glove, extra hat, extra coat. And we all stopped there laughing like, we just enjoy it and uh, suddenly I wish we could finish last scene. Um, so the next one, there's a clip up behind the scene, a good shotting. So you had to probably had to go to. Um, I, I don't know that I received that clip from you. Okay. Um, so that may have to uh, wait uh, for a, another time, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, or I can try to my chair and you think that could work? Uh, potentially, yeah. If it's if it's ready, why don't we uh, why don't we take a look at your DP reel? Yeah, um, because I do have that ready. Um, so give me one second here. I'm going to stop sharing for a second, um, uh, Christian. Um, so one second here. All right. Um, so on the uh, DP rail, um, this is more like all the books I've been making from summer to now from, uh, I made my own short film from my good friend Alice and this is some of the clips there and I made a lot of good shot from Nick and, Nick and Kobe movie and there's some from before that. So I add all one and it look good. And uh, one of my good friend, Wade, he, uh, he's the one to make a good song beat and I asked for it to uh, get a little good, uh, uh, the song for me, and so um, enjoy your video.
right, Christian. Um, great work, great work. Give me one second here. Uh, there we are. Stop the share. Okay, so um, great work. That's your presentation, right? Yeah. Nice. Does any, yeah. That's great. Does anybody have any questions for Christian? Um, I'll just uh, check out in the chat if you do. Uh, we'll just give you one minute. A lot of people say awesome, amazing. <laughs> well, um, you know, uh, working in cinematography is uh, is really a hands-on part of the industry. And um, so um, is there is there one part that you like best, the, the interaction with the other team members or the working with the camera or lighting or the lens choices, or is there anything specific that you like best? Uh, I mean, uh, I would say crew, the team, that we have the same crew for the past two years. I mean, about a year. I don't know how long we've been here, but like, we always have the same crew, no matter what. Like, Jen always be my crew. Uh, um, Nick and Kobe always be my crew. Um, I mean, one one thing I, I want to thank to uh, Brandon Smith, the one who did great gaffer lighting thing. I mean, the way they work in the studio, change the color to normal to red. It's just like I would say one of my most favorite thing is in the studio. That's like we all work together as a team. We made it on time. We're done early. We we probably done this single time, and we just realized we finished earlier. And I just I mean I um um. I don't know. I I I, I'm, I feel happy for my crew. I mean, no matter what, they listen to me. Um, I'm glad they understand me. We work together. Um, yeah. Well, congratulations, Christian. Yeah. Thank um, you. Thank uh, you. We should probably move on. Um, but congratulations to you. Um, before we do, can you tell me what's next for you? Yes, I'm graduating next week. I'm going to get the film tech certificate um I, my plan was trying to take a little break for school i'm gonna take a little break and um i'm gonna try working with short film out in the location well i mean not now but the plan was let's go out shooting location and working with uh maybe i'll get a job for freelance content a lot of people trying to build up growing up bigger and um I, uh, I'm going to try to take a, as soon as possible, I'm going to try to get drone test certificate because I, uh, I've been studying that for a couple of days. Um, I'm looking forward to that. Um, I will come back when the school is all normal. I mean, like less better. I'll come back. I'll help people shooting if they need me contact. I mean, get all information, my phone and my, my email, the school. Um, if anyone wants to be my DP, uh, be your DP, I will come back. Tell me the date when I'll shoot their movie. Um, and I hope we can finish Nick and Kobe movie too. That's what I'm looking forward to. I, I hope we can finish that. Um, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. And I'm trying to transfer to another college, maybe like Point Park, to uh, finish two years for a master's degree or a bachelor's degree, and then I'm good to go. Great. Well, thank you so much, Christian. Great yeah. work. I know. Um, you know, Nick Kobelnicki uh, wanted, uh, he's he, he's not able to finish this movie right now, but as soon as the school's back open, I know you guys will be there and you'll be finishing. Yeah. So congratulations. Moving on. Uh, next up, uh, Christian Abbott, uh, another student who's, uh, who's finishing uh, his FLM 404 this semester. He made, along with several other students, an incredible film, Alchemist's Fire. I'm excited to present this to you for the first time. Christian is excited. We'll be talking to him afterwards. Let's peep it. So let me just get you on to the next thing.
Sorry, we're having just a little bit of technical difficulty. Just wonder if I could grab my notes from last week. Uh, yeah, sure. One sec. Thanks. Ooh, what's that? Uh, nothing. Just a book someone lent me. It looks cool. Looks like a spell book. You know, like in D&D. You don't know D&D? Nope. Have you been living under a rock? Stranger Things, Critical Role, no. Mythica, The Witcher. No. What? We're gonna be late for class. You really never heard of Stranger Things. Wait, so you've really never heard of Dungeons and Dragons before? No, I really have never heard of Dungeons and Dragons before. Okay, well you're gonna love it. It's really more of a Dungeons and or Dragons because you never really have both in the same campaign. Sounds cool. I'll have to check it out. Yeah, you should definitely join us. There's a group of us that meets at the library on Wednesdays. And, I mean, it varies, but we've had up to 30 people sometimes. If I have the time, I'll... Check it out. All right, yeah. everyone. The school only bought half the supplies I wanted, so let's pair up for a lab. And try not to hurt yourselves. I want to keep my job. I could really use some help right now. Those aren't even the materials for our lab. Uh, I think I'm on the wrong page. Okay, well, just, just mix half of these together. Max, you should know better than to put magnesium with chemicals that produce water when heated. Max, Max, are you listening to me? Sorry, I'm just tired today. Speak with me after class. Dude. You just created a bomb. Ah, uh, not the right one. What? Uh, nothing. You think I'm in trouble? Eh, professor's chill. Worst she's gonna do is talk your ear off about science behind it. Somehow, that's almost worse. You said you wanted to speak with me? Yes, Max. I need you to focus on the labs I give you while we're in class. I know it can be exciting to combine random things and see what happens, but there is a risk, just like what happened today. I'm sorry, I was just looking at the wrong thing and I, 
I wasn't paying attention. I know you weren't. If you want to try your own experiments, you can do it after class. But while we're in class, I need you to focus on the labs I give you. Okay. Did you and Ellen finish your lab today? No, I spend most of the time cleaning up. Well, how about you stay and finish while I grade the other labs? Oh, and Max, here's a little extract called Dracaena cinnabari. It doesn't put off water when heated with magnesium. If you're interested in trying that experiment again, given you have the time. I need to go make copies. You can clean up by yourself without supervision, right? Hey, Max. How was school? Good. Boring. Well, that's... Good. There's leftovers in the fridge if you want them. Oh, my day? No, it was great. Thanks for asking. It's so nice to have such a considerate son. Hey, Max. Uh, Max, do you have a sec? Yeah, sorry. Hey, Mom, I just got a load of homework. What's up? I noticed you've been really focused lately, which I should probably be ecstatic about. It's just I'm more worried about you than your grades. I mean, you come home, you blast past me, you go straight to your room. I haven't seen you in weeks. Well, I mean, I just... Look, I... I'm not trying to push. You know I respect your privacy. I just want you to know that if you ever need to talk, you know, about anything, I'm here. Thanks. We're a team, Max. Okay, Mom. You're right. It's just... What? What is it? Well, I'm just having a lot of trouble at school. Eddie, my usual drug dealer, just had a shipment get pinched by the cops and... Okay, smart ass. Look, I appreciate the talk. Even with the BS. <laughs> I just... It's the most I've gotten to talk to you in weeks. Sorry, I just... get really... Fixated? I was gonna say busy. Look, you know I trust you. And I trust that you know that I'm always here for you, but... Just get out of your room now and then. Thanks, Mom. And Eddie only sells trash. Next time you need drugs, go to my guy.
Hey, you made it. Well, if I... <clears throat> if I didn't, I'd never hear the end of it. Nope. Okay, let's grab you a character sheet. Sure. So, um, here's a player's handbook's right here. Just gotta look through it and see what classes and races you like. Yeah? What's this symbol? Which? This one, the arch thing? Oh, that's a necromancer. But I have to warn you though, most people play good characters, so playing a necromancer might be tough to fit in. No, I was just more curious about the symbol. What does a necromancer do? Well, so uh, you have wizards, right? And they use spells to deal damage. And then you have necromancers, who specialize in reanimation? Reanimating, like bringing things to life? Yeah, so they use fresh corpses and bones and, and basically raise the dead to fight for them. How do you stop a necromancer? Well, if they don't have bodies, then they can't make the undead fight for them. But if they have bodies? In that case, you can burn the bodies or you can bless them with holy water. That usually works. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. But word to the wise, if you're trying to take a necromancer down, then you better do it quick. Why? Well, I mean, if they have the bodies, then there's nothing stopping them from summoning them. Shit. What? Um, nothing, I just, I have to get home. I forgot my mom told me to feed the cat. Wait, you're leaving them? I just have to get home really quick. I'll promise to come back and try to make a character. Oh, okay. But remember, we're only here until 10. I'll be back. What are you doing here? Uh, I was just on a hike. Who takes a hike at school? Me? At night? Sure. So, what you up to? I'm raising the dead. And as you can see, it's going very well. Um, okay, sounds cool. I'm just gonna leave you to that. Oh, <laughs> no, no, no. You can't leave. You've seen what I'm doing here. So I'm going to have to kill you. But, but don't worry. <laughs> you won't be dead for long. <laughs> wait, 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 stop, 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 stop. Stop! What? Why are you doing this? Well, I'm glad you asked. I've prepared a monologue. Wait, no, just, just kill me. Ever since I came to this school, I've been disrespected. The teachers treat me like an outsider and the students all treat me like I'm some kind of creep. I spend hours picking up after you disgusting teenagers. Vomit, diarrhea, and piles and piles of garbage. And the theater? My God, the things I've seen in the theater. What happened in the theater? Unspeakable things. No matter, no matter. Because now they will all pay. One by one, they will fall. And one by one, my army of the dead will grow! Starting <laughs> with you. Ah! <clears throat> Seize him! Oh, shit!
holy water. Throw. Throw. The dragon's blood worked then? Dragon's blood? Oh wait, that red vial from earlier? Yeah, that worked. Wait, how did you know what I was trying to make? I think I should know, I wrote the book. You wrote the book? You made all of these potions? What? No, I wrote the book. The potions are a collection of useful brews that all beginner alchemists should know. Tanglefoot and Alchemist Fire being the staples. Like these potions were created long before my time, but with the invented synthetic ingredients, I've improved upon them. Huh, cool. Oh wait, we should stop Dennis or he's gonna summon more of these. Yeah, don't worry about him. That arrow was poisoned with a strong paralysis potion. I mean, you probably didn't notice because you were running away, but Dennis turned as stiff as the dead he likes to hang out with. I guess the fight's over then. You no, know, the fight's over for now. But Max, I didn't give you that book for just one fight. I need your help with something much larger than one necromancer. I guess I should have figured out there'd be more than just alchemy. If magic exists, what else exists? I'll fill you in later. But right now I have to go clean up the messes you left in the hallway. You get out of here for now. All right, give it up for Christian. Uh, Christian Abbott, are you with us, sir? Let me unmute you. Um, how are you, sir? Congratulations to you. Wonderful piece of work. Thank you. Um, uh, what can you tell us about this piece and how, how did this come about and how did it, uh, how did it really get going for you? Um, well, I... Um... I was thinking of a script, of course, like I had to think of an idea and um, I wanted something with a big, bad, evil guy. Um, I'm really into like Dungeons and Dragons uh, and, you know, who better to be evil than a necromancer? And I thought of the line, um, the... <laughs> I'm blanking on it now. The, uh, uh, um, why are you doing this? Oh, I'm glad you asked. I prepared a monologue. And I just started writing around that because I, I thought that that was like so funny in my mind. And I still, I laughed on set every single time they did it and I had to like walk away. Um, but um, yeah, it was, uh, it was uh, a lot of, trial and error with the script and help from outside sources and um. nice well um i know we've got a little uh, uh a very brief powerpoint here i'll pull this up and uh you can sort of just uh walk us through um some of this uh cool stuff so what can we see here uh, next slide um, so I figured, um, for my presentation, uh, what has been helpful for me, at least, um, as a student is hearing from students that are ahead of me or were ahead of me and, um, hearing their issues. So I pretty much brought up, um, all the problems that I had or struggles throughout the production cycle, um, in starting with pre-production, um, there's a lot that goes on, but I'm going to focus on what I thought of were the three C's of Alchemist Fire, uh, which are creating the script, uh, casting, and Costco. Um, and C Costco specifically allergy-friendly craft services. Um, creating the script is one of the most uh, difficult parts uh, of pre-production for me. And it involved a lot of friends reading over drafts of my script, getting outside, insight, and 
losing my voice. Not like I lost my actual voice, but for myself uh, in particular, I have trouble writing dialogue that doesn't sound like how I speak. Um, and that's where getting other people's uh, help um, really challenges everything I write. If somebody doesn't understand it, uh, a line that I write, it's it might be, it probably is because of the way I speak and it's just confusing. So um, on dialogue, shout out to Chris Herrera, um, who revised and wrote a lot of the dialogue in Alchemist Fire, specifically a lot of the mom dialogue, because that was a bit of a struggle for me. Um, the next C is casting. Casting is sometimes difficult. Um, a lot of times for me, and specifically for Alchemist Fire, um, one of the things we had to worry about was scheduling. And um, our, a few of our actors had opposing schedules, which isn't the best um, to make them work together and get days to shoot. Um, other than scheduling, casting is really a mix of watching auditions, reels, personal experience. Uh, I've worked with or have been on set with, have watched um, many of the actors uh, in my film and uh, having that um, experience, seeing them elevate the material given to them um, is just, it. What it's what helps me decide. Um, and I believe all my actors really took my characters, made them their own uh, and made my writing uh, more than I could have ever uh, imagined. Um, and the final C is Costco. This one's pretty quick because um, buying in bulk is good to save money, um, but you have to worry about actors and allergies. And I have a lot of allergies. So one of my big things is for craft service, I want everybody to be, be able to eat. Um, there were long days. I didn't want anybody to not be able to eat some of the snacks we had. We had like separated for vegetarian, gluten-free, low fat. Um, next slide. On to production. This one's pretty quick too. Um, scheduling is a big issue getting the time um, really worked out as to how much time you need to set up, how much time you need to move equipment, how much time actors need, how much time sound needs. Um, and that goes into the second point, which is communication, keeping up good communication. Um, it, it's, uh, it's so crucial um, and uh, it, it keeps, the, the commu constant communication helps with the coordination of different uh, departments. Um, you know, some, our, our uh, Grip and Electric had to move equipment to another uh, set as we were finishing up a scene and we had to coordinate when lunch uh, was happening, where Crafty was going. Um, and there's some uh, uh, behind the scenes for the library. Uh, the next, um, pictures are from that uh, altar set, the ritual grounds. Um, and this kind of plays into scheduling where um, time is really an issue. We started setting up, I would say, I believe it was somewhere around um, 5, 5.30 is where we started setting up the altar. About a half hour later um, is the right side like of the pictures. It got dark that quickly and factoring the amount of time you need to set all of that up and to have enough daylight to not be doing this all in the dark um, is, is really important. Also keeping everybody warm. It was cold. And then for post-production, um, as we all know, uh, the global pandemic of the coronavirus um, uh, obviously stopped some productions, uh, which is unfortunate. I was unable to do some pickup shots, but um, my uh, the thing that is most important to me is always safety. So um, I, I obviously was not willing to risk, the school was not willing to risk anybody to shoot uh, during the global pandemic. Um, and along with safety, um, we, the way we handled data and the way we communicated was all um, within the social distancing guidelines. Um, for communication, we used Facebook Messenger, um, you know, calls, texts, 
Um, and for data, data handling, um, we use Dropbox, Google Drive, and uh, the little drive that could. Um, that hard drive has been to um, every all, all the editing teams' um, houses individually, and we would set it onto in that little baggie onto a porch, and then somebody would pick it up, and you know that's how we would move a large amount of data around. Um, and uh, finally, I just want to say thanks uh, to everybody who helped make this short film possible. And I couldn't have done this without the help of my amazing cast and crew. Thank you so much. Nice. Great presentation, brother. Any questions from, uh, from folks for Christian? Great job, buddy. I see. How did you do the invisibility effect? Yeah. Um, so I personally didn't do it. Uh, Alex uh, Collinger, the DP, uh, Jen Springle, uh, one of our editors, and then Mark Penny, uh, our main editor, we all worked together. Um, Alex figured out how to do it in After Effects. Mark put it in. Um, and uh, we all were just um, figuring out how After Effects works. I, it, it, the, the way the effect works is basically it changes the opacity of one and puts a filter over it. I think so. Um, it, it's like two images on each other. Uh, other questions for Christian? Well, Christian, uh, I have a question. Uh, you know, just a couple quick points and we'll move on. But um, what, uh, what is your plan for this piece? What is the next step in the, in the process for you? I know you have certain markets that you specifically focus on in your work. What, what is the plan for this? Yeah, so um, I have already entered this into two film festivals, um, one for Origins, uh, the Origins Film Festival, which is at the Origins Game Fair um, in, I believe, Columbus, Ohio. And um, it got postponed, but they're still having the film festival. Um, and then the Gen Con Film Festival, um, both of these are uh, large gaming events. So like Dungeons and Dragons is huge, Pathfinder is huge. Um, and I just wanna connect with that community. Um, so ho hopefully I, I get something from the uh, film festivals, but just the experience of being at a film festival is great. Awesome. Um, and, uh, what's next for you, buddy? What, what is the next thing? Uh, I really, um, through the course of my semesters at CCAC found out where I kind of fit, um, in the production cycle. And I, I, I figured out that I really enjoy producing. I like, um, getting people together. I like, um, keeping the communication up. Um, and making sure our standards are kept for the production, making sure everybody has what they need um, and trying to keep deadlines. Um, and so I, I think I'm going to uh, try to get more into the producing aspect, producing short films, um, helping directors uh, gather people and um, save some money while making short films. That's great. Uh, well, uh, thank you so much for everything you've done. It, it, it's, an, it's an incredible effort. Um, I can't wait to see uh, what uh, the, the next bit of news on Alchemist Fire. I know it's just going um, it's gonna, to it's gonna get bigger. So thank, um, you. Uh, thank you so much. Next up, we're going to hear a short video from Mark Pinney. Uh, Mark Pinney is our fourth and final FLM 404 student. Uh, who is completing this semester. Um, Mark focused on editing. Uh, Mark was involved in the editing for both of these pieces. And if the video that you are about to see is in any way harrowing, it's because yesterday he was trying to output both Broken Bits and Alchemist Fire along with doing his own work. Um, he can't be with us today because he had to go to work to actually make money. But, um, but Mark is an extremely hard worker uh, and as you could imagine, if you haven't tried to output a project before, the final day of outputting a project is always extremely uh, nerve wracking because, of course, there were failed attempts at exporting the projects that you saw here today. And Mark took on the brunt of that uh, pain and responsibility. 
So let me share the screen and share with you a brief video from Mark. Just one second. Hi everyone, uh, I'm, my name is Mark Penny. I'm one of the um, uh, film students uh, working on their culminating experience this semester. Um, my, um, my, my focus this semester has been working on um, editing. Um, and uh, I've actually worked on a couple of different projects, uh, two student projects and um, a pseudo in internship uh, with a local production company called Two to One Media, um, so um, my experience so far has been absolutely great, honestly. Um, so I'll start with Two to One Media since that's probably the one most of you haven't heard about yet. Um, they're a smaller local company. Um, my a uh, friend of mine from my day job at, at Best Buy started this company, and. Um, We've been uh, primarily working together on um, a local uh, wrestling promotion called IWC, uh, International Wrestling Cartel, and they, they're just kind of a, um, a independent wrestling promotion in the Pittsburgh area. And they, they do some out-of-town shows, but um, mostly they're um, um, based out of Elizabeth, Pennsylvania. Um, they're just a couple miles outside of West Mifflin. Um, and um, I, I've been uh, working with them actually for the past year now, doing mostly camera work. Um, but within the past couple of months, he, um, he's let me take on some extra responsibilities working with, it, um, with some of the editing for the shows. Um, and so the, the wor working with a live event like that um, uh, provides kind of a unique challenge in that we're working with multiple cameras at once um, and um, you know trying to get those all synced together properly um, was kind of a big challenge at first and then also given the fact that um, we, we do a live stream at each event and that live stream has its own cutting that, that we do live and so sometimes we don't always get the best shot during the shows and we kind of have to comb through the show multiple times uh, while we're editing things to uh, dig out the best shot or you know maybe that one wasn't you know didn't have good lighting in it and we have to change the color correct it, or color corrections in it um, and then um, we also have to have to go through and add in any graphics that that need added uh, any videos that need added for, you know, intermissions, um, uh, any promotional videos that we have to add, things like that. So, um, usually I, I, I was able to get it down to, you know, making one pass through the video, um, for each duty. So, you know, adding graphics and then adding video and then adjusting color correction and then adjusting sound. Um, and so, um, Usually I was able to um, get it done on one um, timeline in Premiere, um, but at first uh, um, it kind of helped to have multiple timelines for each run through. Uh, it kind of helped me keep things organized. Um, and um, the, the other big issue that I noticed at first as well that, um, you know, we're working on student films kind of helped me with, but um, was still kind of a unique challenge in this point was having to sync audio from a couple of different sources. Um, and so sometimes if you make one small mistake during a, you know, almost a three hour show, that can throw the entire project off. And I, um, there are a few times, uh, luckily he didn't throw me directly into production, uh, but there are a few times where I essentially had to start from scratch on this entire show. So, um, it, it's, been an absolute learning curve. Like, like I mentioned, it, it's several times longer than most anything that I've, I've edited before, almost three hours. 
Um, so it was an experience. And I, I got to film the shows, too. Uh, so that was a great experience, being able to meet some of these guys that uh, do the promotions, uh, work with uh, my friend Jeremy, who runs that production company, uh, getting, you know, getting to get my hands on some of the equipment that he uses. Um, it, you know, it, again, it, it's it, that was kind of an all-encompassing experience on that. Um, and then, um, I, again, I worked on two... Um, uh, student films. Uh, one was Christian Abbott's Alchemist's Fire project. Uh, I was kind of the lead editor on that one. Um, with his, uh, the biggest challenges that I noticed with his was trying to coordinate, um, you know, getting effects from uh, from other students, um, and then trying to coordinate with those students on how best to edit everything. Um, and then when COVID nineteen hit, that kind of threw a wrench in everything. And it just was kind of one step further into, you know, tr how do we, you know, coordinate with everyone. Um, uh, ultimately, I, I had to get some effects essentially driven over to me uh, from <laughs> from one of my coworkers. Um, but ultimately, in the end, the the biggest challenge was because we shot in such a high resolution format. Um, you might actually be able to hear in the background right now uh, what sounds like fans going on. Uh, that's actually one of my computers running, um, trying to render out such a large amount of information. Um, so, um, that again, coordinating between people and then trying to figure out how best to render out these files was the biggest challenge. Um, and then uh, the other student um, film that I worked on was Mark Brady's Broken Bits uh, film. Um, with his, um, uh, again, it was one of those situations where I, I essentially had to have some of the, the uh, data delivered to me, essentially. Um, I joined that project kind of late in the game. Uh, he had already had a, a rough cut of the film uh, ready for me. And so with his, um, it was a little bit more, you know, refinement and then um, sound correction and color correction, things like that. Um, and then just kind of, you know, trimming things up a little bit. Um, with his, I did add a few things of, of my own. I took a little bit of artistic license. Um, but um, I, I also had to find a few extra sound effects and, and music. To, to put into the movie, um, but ultimately all three projects were seriously a great experience for me. So, um, if you have any questions for me, um, I'll have a picture of my business card actually at the end of this video. Um, I'll try to leave it on there for, well, I'll, I'll leave it on there for a while and uh, I guess PJ will decide how long it stays up for. So. Um, again, um, thanks for listening, uh, and I hope you enjoyed the, the, the movies that I helped edit. All right, so that's a great message from Mark Penny. Um, I, uh, I, I do have here Mark Penny's info, and I'm sharing it in the chat. Uh, I have shared it once, but I'll share it one more time. Uh, give me one second here. Um, uh, hold on one second. There we go. So there's Mark Penny's info. You can email him and let him know uh, your thoughts. He wishes he could be here, um, but uh, but he had to do some other things. So. Moving on, it is time uh, to take um, a momentary respite from longer projects and look uh, from uh, production one, our production one class, um, we're going to look at a selection of spec commercials. These are fake commercials or speculative commercials that our students in production one made some of their first projects. We have a selection of them for you to view. I'm going to take the names of these commercials and post them here in the chat and then uh, we'll have somebody repost these over to the YouTube link so you can see them there as well. 
great job, everybody, from the 404 projects. I love all your work. We're moving right along. So give me just one second, and we'll be able to see these, uh, these commercials. We'll see them in two blocks. The first block will be all from iTunes, and then the second block from our YouTube link. So just one second as I, as I bring them up. Big screen. On the big screen? That's right, it's a console too. Wanna play? Absolutely. Vince here. Do you love cooking, but always run out of seasoning at the worst time? What if I told you never how to eat Karen's unseasoned dry chicken ever again? Let me show you some. Now introducing Fine Ground. For all of your last minute cooking needs, order now and I'll throw in the brand new travel size container, the car jar. For herbs on the go, you take the Fine Ground car jar to the office, parents' house, even parties. By using our airtight technology, you're guaranteed not to smell like herbs next time you're with your company. Water gives us life. It cleans the world around us. It nourishes our plant life. It cleans and refreshes our life. That's right, Jim. We're here on the grounds where the most recent Mothman sighting has occurred. And I gotta say, it's pretty creepy out here. It was last seen around Point Pleasant, West Virginia, terrorizing two elderly ladies. The poor old ladies were just trying to enjoy their bingo night when Mothman appeared out of nowhere. Do not fear the most men. Please leave all windows and doors unlocked when you come to visit Point Pleasant, West Virginia. Not you when you're hungry. Grab a Snickers. How dare you? What through? Doritos, so good you can see the future.
congratulations, you're hired. Because f that's why. Jimmy? What on earth are you doing out here? You're from Jersey! You wouldn't know your brass from your woodlands. What in tarnation? Jimmy Jr., get over here! Snap into a Slim Jim. <laughs> what would you do for a Klondike bar? I'd dance. I'd juggle. And what would you do for a Klondike bar? I would kill a man. Oh. 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 Um. Is that what we... All right, that's our first group of spec commercials right there. Uh, what you saw was from Ryan Milan uh, or my, Ryan Milan, um, uh, an iPod, an iPhone iPod commercial. James McCann, uh, the Nintendo Switch. Um, Michael Harney, Fine Grind, J. Patrick Hughes, the water commercial, Delia Listina uh, for Mothman slash West Virginia, uh, Kayla L Lukic for uh, Snickers, Madison McCoy for Doritos, uh, Jacob Russell with his Astroglide commercial, Faith Muse with a commercial for Trojan condoms, Haley Richmond with one for Slim Jim, and Emily Oblak with a commercial for the Klondike Bar. I have four more to show you. Let me just flip over to, um, to our other uh, location one second.
dark already. Where is she? Mom! I'm here! And I haven't forgotten. All right, and then a secondary selection of films uh, or of, of uh, spec commercials, just as important, but we had to watch them from YouTube because they turned them in, but couldn't get access to them because of COVID-19. Um, that's Oladary, Attaboy with Nike Esports, Frank Lucas with Oculus, um, Grant Walsh with CPR Awareness, and last but certainly not least, because she made it with her mom and her grandma, uh, Chloe Schoplin with a commercial for Coca-Cola. Great job, everybody, on your spec commercials. We'll see a few more pieces from you soon enough in just a, in just a little bit of time. But we're moving on. I wanted to show you a selection of things from our cinematography students. Normally, the Cinematography One students make a, make a music video and then shoot Production One students' final projects. But of course, that wasn't possible this semester. So they had to move on and do some pieces on their own uh, with very limited resources. And so one of the things they tried to do was make a documentary, a brief documentary focusing on a subject or a person they had immediate access to even during the COVID-19 crisis that we're facing right now. And the first one I wanted to show you was from Courtney Emerson. She did one uh, on her girlfriend who works as a hospital nurse. So let's check out Courtney's um, short documentary. My name is Hannah Rice. I'm an intensive care nurse working at St. Clair Hospital, and I'm working on the front lines of the COVID-19 pandemic. Obviously, working in a hospital, we're always conscientious about hygiene, like hand hygiene and other stuff, but we're even more heightened about it now. Going into work is a little different these days because we get screened going in. So we have to have our temperature taken. They ask us questions about if we're having any potential symptoms of COVID-19 and they hand us each one mask. My hospital is actually doing a pretty good job providing me with the equipment. We call it personal protective equipment, PPE for short. They're doing a great job providing us with this PPE um, because as the media has shown, there is a nationwide shortage on a lot of things like masks and um, we wear gowns going into the room, plastic gowns, so they're one-time use. Also, we wear these papper masks, which is basically the purifying air hood. So it's basically this big hood that goes over your head and there's a machine that's attached to a belt and it literally just cycles the air constantly and purifies it. So working so closely with the COVID-19 virus does change my outlook on it. If anything, I just take it more seriously because I know what can happen from it. Um, but that being said, my job is doing a great job of protecting me, so I feel safer at work than I do anywhere else. So working on the front lines of this pandemic, you really have to take care of your own mental health because um, one of the first rules of nursing is you have to take care of yourself to take care of others. So obviously it can be kind of overwhelming working in this climate. It can be as little as making yourself a cup of coffee before going into work, um, doing some meditation, or having like a glass of wine after work, like anything you need to do to unwind after work or prepare yourself before work.
So th some things the general population can do to help slow the spread, help end this quarantine, help slow the pandemic, um, are really things that we all should be doing anyways, and everybody knows, and is hopefully already doing. So staying at home, reducing the amount of people people that you're seeing on a day-to-day -day basis, um, a, like not going out to the store as often, try to consolidate your trips for errands, wash your hands, obviously. The CDC is now recommending everybody wear masks out. We, we ask that you save the disposable masks for the healthcare workers, but a lot of people are making reusable cloth masks that are a great option for going out to the grocery store. Um, and then just be safe about touching your face. I mean, and again, people have heard this time and time again, but really that's some of the biggest protections we can have against this virus. All right. Uh, great job. Great job, Courtney. Thank you so much for that important uh, uh, documentary. Next up, um, from the nurses on the front lines to the grocery store workers on the front lines, um, Jason Fitterer made a short documentary about what it's like for him working at Giant Eagle. Um, so let's check out this short documentary from cinematography student, Jason Fitterer. Just one second, it's gonna happen, I swear. Before the virus at the US, everything was normal. No one really cared about uh you know, getting sick and that, no one really took any precautions. All right, so let's see here. You got one, two, four packs of toilet paper, right? Just make sure I have it correct. No. Got to make sure. <coughs> you got the cough thing going around? Yeah. All right, keep one back. Even when the virus hit the U.S., no one really still cared. A few more masks, a few more gloves were being sold. But as soon as it hit the state, well... That was the start of the great toilet paper shortage of 2020. I'm sorry, limit is one pack of toilet paper, paper towels, or packs of water per customer. I'm so sorry, but that's what we have right now. One pack limit. Ma'am, you cannot put the toilet paper on seven different orders. It is a limit of one pack per customer. But, but you're still the same customer. But that doesn't make sense. Why can't you do it on separate orders? Listen, ma'am, it is a limit of four single rolls of toilet paper or one pack. You cannot come out with a whole buggy of singular rolls. You have to 25 here. Limits four. That's fine, I have 20 packs at home. We have already have like 20 packs at home. What do you need 25 more singular rolls? Give me your toilet paper, I'll fucking kill you. Today, masks are 100% required by all of our employees and customers. But yesterday we have a few interesting customers. All right, there you are, have a good day, sir. This last day I come in the store. You can still right? come in the store tomorrow. You just can't. You just have to have a mask. <laughs> like hell, I'm gonna wear a mask. Okay, so a uh, lovely piece from Jason Fitterer about his um, his experience uh, doing uh, being a COVID nineteen. Uh, first person, you know, immediate responder kind of person at the grocery store. 
Next up, we hear from Elizabeth Leghorn uh, as she tries to find out uh, what secret animal Mark Pinney wishes he was. Here we go. Well, I think when I was a child, I had this weird dream that I was a squirrel. And ever since then, it's been my goal in life to be as squirrel like as possible. If I could do anything, I might run around this park like a little squirrel. And the squirrels, they're pretty happy. I just want to be carefree, you know? Ignore the world and all its problems, go around and eat some nuts. I just um, see them dangling there and I just want to grab them, shove them into my mouth. I thoroughly enjoy nuts for some odd reason. I think my other favorite thing about them is their ability to be able to go into parks whenever the heck they want to. You know, and you see a squirrel in a park, nobody thinks to ask any questions. They're just there looking for nuts. Um, and I, I think I'll just have a really good time with that. You know, I, I will climb up trees and throw nuts at people, climb up people's legs up onto their shoulders and set nuts on their shoulders. Uh, I think it would be a really, really fun time. Well, I think that's the perfect way to be a squirrel. You know, don't have to worry about rent. I have all the money in the world. Don't have to worry about food. I think I really like their big old bushy tails, you know? At night, they can curl up around them and stay warm, use it like a little built-in blanket. And that's exactly what I would do if I could do anything. So, yes, become a bushy little squid. I would enjoy it by collecting nuts. All right, give it up for Mark, right? And uh, well, Elizabeth Leghorn, uh, trying to get to the heart of uh, Mark's need to be a, a squirrel. I, I know it's a serious, <laughs> it's a serious documentary. But sometimes what we need right now is a little bit of uh, a little bit of um, of lightness in our being, right? Um, happy to hear about Mark um, and his squirrel needs. Next up, Jackie Druga took the assignment in another direction, and she went with mockumentary. So she is searching for the Green Man. Let's check out Jack, Jackie Druga's uh, short mockumentary, Searching for a Green Man. Following the brutal murder of two men in the local park, authorities have launched a manhunt for their prime suspect, the Green Man. He's out there. I know it. I've looked. I've looked everywhere. Everywhere. I first became obsessed with the Green Man when I was just a little kid, you know? And I remember we had taken a ride and our car broke down on a dark road in South Park. It was night. And my aunt and uncle got out of the car and they left me and, uh, yeah, they left me. And they said, stay there, you'll be fine. Just get down because the Green Man will get you. Sad. The Green Man is said to be an urban legend. He's not. He's real. He's very, very real. And his story is sad. So sad. the green man real absolutely have I met him no 
Do I want to meet him? No. I don't care what people say. He's vicious. People have made him out to be the boogeyman when he is just a man. His name was Ray Robinson. When he was a child, he was playing on the railroad tracks and while climbing, he got electrocuted. He pretty much melted his entire face. People then looked at him as a monster. So he went into hiding. Some would say they would see him walking around at night. Um, he supposedly lost his eyes. So walking on the road? Um, yeah, I don't think so. It's, it's been my goal to find him, to talk to him, and to reach out to him. Do I know where he is? Absolutely. I found his home and wanted to go in there, but you know, you need warrants and all. I couldn't get one no matter what I did. I couldn't 100% prove he was behind those crimes. He wouldn't emerge from that hideout anyhow. He spends his days doing crafts. Like, he weaves these mats and these baskets and these pot holders. I mean, if he was that bad, would he be doing that? No, no. I mean, this is a funny story. My mom told me this back in the 70s. She was driving down the road and, and there he was on the side of the road selling his little homemade arts and crafts. And she got me a pot holder and I'll treasure it forever. Was he real? Yes. Was he crazy? I mean, probably a little considering he went into hiding. Was he a murderer? Absolutely not. <clears throat> Is he still alive today? He was born in 1910. So he passed away over 40 years ago. The biggest argument that people give me is that he is not alive. I call bull on that one because you want to know why? He was electrocuted. Think Frankenstein, right? When that electricity goes through your body, it does something. It really does something to you. And I think it did something to him. Yes, he's 110 years old, but that's nothing in Giga Joel years, right? Do I know where he lives? Absolutely, I know where he lives. Good luck getting him out of there. What am I going to do when I meet him? I don't know, I, I want to talk to him, hug him. I am so excited. Mr. Green Man, hi, I'm Sally. Mr. Green Man, I'm Sally. I brought you Chinese food. He wasn't there. He didn't answer. I will never give up. I believe that a little bit of kindness and a little bit of general souls will go so far. All he needs is someone to be there, someone to say, Mr. Green Man, I'm here, I care. And that someone will be me. All right, great job, Jackie. Thank you so much for uh, for uh, educating us on the green man and the mystery. And I agree with you. A little bit of Chinese food can go a long way. Okay, coming up next, we have two DP reels. One of uh, the final projects in the cinematography class is to make a cinematography reel. And these two folks really wanted us to show theirs to you. Uh, Ethan Kinsella and then Jason Fitterer. So let's check out these two reels back to back.
All right. Uh, great job, guys. Great job. Important to note, Jason Fitterer edited his reel on his phone, as well as his short documentary. He, he, he doesn't have a working computer right now that he can edit on. So he's, he's working completely on that. Ooh, one second. Getting ahead of myself here. Um, great. So coming up next, I'd like to invite uh, Brandon Eunice, Professor Brandon Eunice, to introduce uh, what happened in the editing course this semester and the short that he is screening. Brandon, are you out there? Let's see if we can't find you. I'm here. No, no video, though. No video. Just just a voice. Just a floating voice. That's OK. What can you tell us? All right. Um, so, yeah, coronavirus happened, as everybody knows. So we had to change a lot of things. But um, we did the same thing that we did last semester, which is I give all of the students the same footage and they all have to edit the same project. And I think a lot of people think of editing as just a way to um, put the shots in order kind of thing. Um, but I think when you start to learn about editing, you realize that that's really not the case. Um, the editor is the person who, um, he kind of creates the painting at the end using all of the paint, basically. Um, so uh, every single project that is edited from a different editor is going to look completely 100% different, um, even if it's using the same footage and the same screenplay. Um, so in the course, we had that happen and we were able to get some of our projects done um, from home and uh, the students voted on which one they thought was the best. And I don't believe Aubreyon is here. I don't think I saw her on the list there, but Aubreyon, I believe her last name is Passante, but I'm not really sure if I'm saying that right. Um, she's the one that uh, had the most votes for uh, which one will be screened today. Uh, she was very creative with her uh, edit of the finished project. And so, yeah, that'll be that'll be what we're showing today. Great, Brandon. All right, here it is, Aubreyon's cut. Um, I believe it's called In Reverse, right? Yeah. Um, great, here it comes.
this it? You don't have to do this. I've got a secret. What is it? I'm really scared right now. Yeah, me too. Listen, I'm really sorry about getting you fired. I didn't really like that job anyway. <laughs> Do you just want to get out of here? Okay. Because you didn't fucking help me. You just stood there and listened to your stupid fucking music. You started that fight. You always have to act so tough. God, I'm leaving. Grab my lighter. Why do you even have a lighter? Are you seriously smoking cigarettes now, too? Maybe. Maybe it's for something else. Like drugs? What are you gonna do? Snitch? You don't even know where to get drugs. Well, maybe I do. At the studio on 4th, they sell drugs. Oh, yeah? Well, if you're so tough, let's go there and buy some right now. Maybe I will. Fine, let's go. Petunia! Anxiety? You're such a baby. I should have kicked your ass today. Why? You got me fired. Maybe I should have kicked your ass. Yeah. I've never even been in a fight before. Yeah? I saw the last fight you were in. Didn't exactly end well. See, that's your fucking problem. As soon as things get rough, you put on your music and you shut down. I'm not shutting down. It helps with my anxiety. What the hell is wrong with you girls? You used to be best friends. Christ, Petunia, how do you get fired from a farmer's market job? Wasn't my fault. I don't care who did what. Don't come home until you figure out your differences, or I'll figure them out for you. I've got a secret. Remember when we used to do that? The secret game. Do you seriously just shut up? Why do you hate me? Christ, you're so dramatic.
All right. So there we go. That is um, uh, Aubrey Passante's effort in terms of editing uh, from the editing course. Great job, Aubrey. Next up, um, uh, a special presentation. Uh, Jen Springle. Jen, are you with us? Join us, Jen. Let me hear your voice if you are. Hey. Hey, you're eating. Um, <laughs> Uh, tell us a little bit about the social distance, the film experiment. I know it's all, it's all CCAC students who made this incredible thing. Tell us what it is and what we're about to see. Okay, so the pandemic started and I missed all my friends. So I started a group and I was like, hey, let's play a game. So what it was is um, I got 10 filmmaker friends and um, the first person filmed, it was very strict rules. You only got 30 seconds to tell your story. And then the first person told a 30 second story. And then the second person got the first person's footage and the third person got the second person's footage. So nobody saw any other footage except for the footage that came directly before their piece. And we made a film and then this is what it is. Sweet, let's peep it. Let's check out uh, the social distance film. something really weird in the mail. Yeah, I, hold on, I think I'm gonna have to call you back. Morning. It's been about three weeks since the first doll was burned. They, they, they just keep coming. We don't know where they're coming from. Can't seem to find it. Yeah. Well, the car's wrecked. I gotta continue on foot. Okay, I came up to a house. I was able to find a way in. We'll see how this goes, how this works out. This is day 56. Wait, 
I think I hear something. I'm not sure what it is. I'm gonna go check it out. I didn't see anything. I don't know what I'm doing. Oh. Stupid human clearly says, do not enter. What do you think was going to happen? Now what do we do with him? Uh, I am hungry. I have sauce and cheese. Human Parmesan? Don't eat me, don't eat me. No, 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 no. Wait, come back. God damn it. It's my dinner. Where's the butcher knife? Just let me go! Let me go! Why are you making me watch this? Let me go! Let me go! I want to go! Let me out! I don't want to watch it anymore! Just let me go! It's in here. What did they do? Listen, I'm gonna get you out of here. So glad we found you. Y'all know there's a dude here? Leave him? Okay, great job. Great job. Great job, Jen. Great job for your entire team. Uh, clever idea and a clever film. So um, congratulations to one and all. Um, we should move on. Our next film, uh, we are going to move into some semester one projects uh, uh, next. And the first one we're going we're gonna to hear from is going to be Emily Oblek. Um, just a little bit of info about Emily. Um, Emily is a native of Pittsburgh, PA, and is happy to be back in the area after several long distance moves. She attended the, uh, the University of Pittsburgh where she graduated in 2018 with a BA in anthropology. After several months of frustrating job searching, she was curious what work she could find in the local film industry. She decided to enroll at CCAC in their film technician program, intending to focus in grip electric as well as art department. But during an intro class, she was surprised by an interest in screenwriting and directing that she, uh, that she gained. Uh, Emily resides in South Park with her girlfriend and their cat. Uh, they hope to purchase their first home soon, but are concerned that the cat may not be able to pull his own weight. So here is her short film that she made pretty much by herself uh, called Kintsugi. Here we go. Pictures have emerged of a mass grave in New York as the death toll continues to rise. The testing continues to be an issue. The U.S. has now recorded more than a million COVID-19 cases. That's almost a third of the global total. And tonight, as the number of confirmed coronavirus cases in this country climbs to over a million and deaths surpass American losses in the Vietnam War, there are increasing worries about a breakdown of the food chain.
Great job, Emily. Great job, Emily. Um, next up, uh, we'll see a short um, documentary from Frank Lucas. Frank Lucas is a 19-year-old gamer and beginning streamer. He's creative, and he's a beginning screenwriter. He also likes to volunteer his time um, at uh, food pantries. Let's check out this film from Frank Lucas. Um, it is entitled Small Community, Big Hearts. To get clothes ready, to head over to the Allenport Food Bank. And we're gonna be asking questions about how we're helping people in these dark times we're all facing. These are each and every one of the items the food bank is receiving to help every single person right now. For right now, they're in the boxes and in carts. Make sure the next what we're going to be doing is boxing these up to the next person and hand them over to the families who need them desperately. Another one that I got. We volunteer to okay, help hey, the less fortunate people to the camaraderie to be with like the other people when you're retired. You know, you get out, you socialize, and by helping, this is why we do it. food and boxes. Each person has a, has a different job. We have people putting rice and cereal in one boxes. We have people putting drinks and canned foods in another. And other people checking over and putting more boxes out to help, the commu help this community. We have unloaded food off the truck and are now bringing it into the back so they can be sorted for each box in the food bank. 
we got our food through Washington County Food Bank. But they also get those from, it could be Walmart, it could be Sam's Club, uh, there's a lot of donations that are given in, but our main food comes through Washington County Food Bank. Wait, where are you? Are they down here? Hey, you guys, keep your heads out so he can film you. It doesn't matter. Okay, come on, we need boxes fresh. What are you doing down there? <laughs> Don't worry, just hide back in there, she won't notice. <laughs> yeah, I miss my friends and my teacher and my social worker and my science class and my math class and my group. Each person is now lining up for, for the food bank. Now, when each person, each person, they'll come down, down to the door, hand them the ticket, and then out at the end, they'll be handing their food into the car. As you can see, there is a large line of people in not one but many different communities trying trying to get food during this during this dark time. Um, less food is being donated and more people are coming from different counties and different towns. We have an extra 250 people that are coming to the food bank now. How many volunteers have been here? Um, we're only allowed to have 10 in the building for safety reasons, so only 10 at a time. And then we have other volunteers that are outside. We are now moved the boxes. All of them have been packed up and tables have been put up. Now all that's left is to hand, them, hand the boxes to the people. There's a pile of fire. Oh. I want you to grab me one. Is this a pink one? It doesn't look under the yellow. Oh. Oh, I think this is absolutely helping others today. We've had many, many people show up. Everybody needs a little bit of help in these times. All right. Great job, Frank. Uh, certainly important. If you have extra food, please donate it. And if you need it, hopefully you can find it in a food bank near you. Um, coming up next, uh, we've got a short piece from James McCann. Born and raised in Bethel, uh, Bethel Park, Pennsylvania, his love for film and online productions began as a child with his fascination with children's television programming. In fact, he received his first video camera at age 10 and began uploading to YouTube shortly thereafter. Fast forward to middle school and Jay was actively involved with Neil Armstrong film crew. When he's not dedicating his time to making films, you can find Jay enjoying his spare time watching the newest Pixar movies, playing various video games and attending national gaming conventions. All right, let's check out this short video that Jay made um, called 10 Quarantine Activities.
Great job, Jay. Okay, coming up next, we have a, pre, a piece from Madison McCoy where she interviews her parents. Madison says, I've always been very interested in film and filmmaking. This is my first year at CCAC. I'm getting an associate's degree, then transferring to Duquesne University. In the future, I hope to do something with film and early childhood development. For those of you who can't afford to... Just one second, and I will have Madison's piece up for you to view. Hi. Have you picked up any new hobbies since the coronavirus? This aerial yoga. So you put this thing together. This is like a swing and this is handles for your arms, different lengths. And I like to put it up and take it down. <laughs> because I also paint in here. But that was my hobby before the coronavirus. So, Mom, what is this position called? Cocoon. You see why in a minute. What phase of mine was your favorite? Um, well, looking back, it wasn't my favorite at the time. <laughs> but looking back now, it was um, terrible tis. You were terrible. <laughs> but it was fun. It was a lot of fun stuff. So, what are you doing? I'm grinding this metal down. For what? Like, this is the backrest I just made for the new bike. Is that your favorite hobby? Yeah, besides drinking beer. What is Myrtle Beach Bike Week? It's bike week where we go to see other bikes and drink beer. Hmm, interesting. And so tell me about this bike that you guys have been working on. This is a Harley Davidson 2007 Road King. It's 5,500 miles on it. it. Runs excellent. Stretch bag, stretch fenders, stereo, Bluetooth. We have stretch tank, we have custom paint, we have custom headlights and turn signals, we have custom front wheel, we have custom front fender. So let's talk about what you have been creating here. This is the backrest mm -hmm. for the bike. Yes. It's going to attach to the bike in here, in this kind of area, so your mother doesn't fall off the back. Good. When I go fast. Nice. And pop wheelies. So it will be painted and have a nice grill feature right here to coordinate with the rest of the bike. So right now, we're still in the process of building that. Always wear your safety glasses. All right, sort of a little bit of an abrupt ending, but um... But thank you, Madison, for uh, for sharing um, some of your your family activities with us. Great piece. Okay, moving right along. Um, give me one second. Let me prep the next piece here. Um, okay. Uh, All right, we're back into it. All right, moving right along is a piece by J. Patrick Hughes, How to Make Your Own Bread. J. Patrick says, I like playing games, watching movies, and drawing art. 
very succinct. That's what he likes. And he made this uh, short film on how to, how to bake your own bread. Let's peep it. For those of you who can't afford to buy bread or been put under order to stay home at quarantine times, you should learn how to make your own bread. First you eat a bread machine bowl, then you can pour in four tablespoons, you can pour in one tablespoon of yeast. Then, one and a half teaspoon of salt. Then you add, like I said, three whole wheat of flour. And then a half cup of unbleached white flour. If those of you don't have half cups at home, you can use two one-fourth cups. Then, one third cup of cornmeal. Then, three tablespoons of non-fat dry milk. I have to admit, not all honey could could work, but not all honey could work fast, you know, but it sometimes happens that way. Wash a while, then we put in one and a third cup of water. And finally, two tablespoons of vegetable oil. And of course, 
Voila! And now, we're heading back to the kitchen. Side note, not all bread machines have their lids on all the time. In fact, this one's a little old, which means it's broken apart, but it's still useful for putting on. Anyway, once they are set, you can put them into the machine itself. Put the lid on it, set it on basic bread, and you might wait until the machine is done. It takes two hours and 45 minutes. That I promise you. When the buzzer is buzzed, which it did, you take it out of the bread machine. Ooh, caution, it's hot. <laughs> So you might need a hot bag to bring it out. Ta -da! Our very own bread. Oh, peanut butter and jelly on fresh bread. This is my favorite. Why, thank you. Thank you. I made it myself for you. Thank you very much. I didn't want you to be too disappointed. And it also saves money. And it's better than store-bought bread. Bon appetit, Mom! Okay, great job, Jay Patrick. Thank you so much for that wonderful foray into bread making. I, I've learned quite a bit. Um, uh, next up, uh, we have uh, two short films from uh, Ryan Mylan. Uh, Ryan is an aspiring filmmaker of about 10 years. From working with professionals to working with friends, Ryan, Ryan embarks on a self-empowering journey to figure out who he is, who he can trust, and who's willing to make a movie. Okay, so two films back-to-back -back from Ryan. All right, class, let's get started. I'll take attendance. It looks like we're missing someone. Hmm. Give me one second. Right. Just get up and get to class, now. All right, I'm going, I'm going. Can I at least get dressed first, man? No, let's go. Hi, everybody. <laughs> you see, students? That's what happens when you don't come to class. So it's really happening. Quarantine is on and we all have to start social distancing. It's fine. It's going to be fine. I mean, it's sort of like a typical day for me anyway. What could possibly go wrong? Do you love me? there's any new messages. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll check back later then. I should probably go make some food. Yeah, good idea. I know with the recent outbreak of the coronavirus, a lot of you are worried about going to the grocery store to get your food. But I found out a little, a little secret 
in which you don't have to go to the store to get your food. You get it right from home. You see, with the spring coming up, I found out a tip. Here, take a look. I'm Poppy. Ooh, I wonder if she's up for a Zoom date. Hmm. All right, how about now? Still nothing. Okay, no, it's fine. It's fine. We're off to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of Oz. <laughs> I'm going insane. Help. As you can see, this produces a natural herb that you can use in soups, salads, or protein shakes, whatever it is. It's a really healthy and organic way to uh, stay home and prevent yourself from getting sick. What if the earth is flat? Someone messaged me by now. I, I don't know. Seriously, is there nobody that I can trust right now? Hey, uh, I need someone to hang out with during this pandemic. Maybe we could talk for a little bit. Ah! Okay, then. Right. Just a typical... Normal day. <laughs> oh, my God. Great job, Ryan. Thanks for bringing back that Smosh video style. Um, I appreciate it. Um, sweet. Um, coming up next. Um, Let's look at a project from Faith Muse. Uh, Faith says that she grew up and never left Pittsburgh, and she's probably going to die here. Um, she says she loves music and cheese, but cheese doesn't like her. Um, she likes horror and action films, and she's also in love with the idea of what-if situations. Music is a big part of her life, and it always will be. So let's check out Faith Muse's The Downward Spiral. I love you so much. See you after all this. It's day one in quarantine. Well, what should be day one? But who's been counting? <sighs> it's getting worse. I lost somebody too dear to me. I don't know how long we can do this for. But welcome to life in the quarantine. It's day two of our quarantine of um, everything getting worse. Uh, <laughs> shit still sucks. Am I feeling better? I don't know. I'm numb. I cried at least. Four hours yesterday. It all seems unreal. Um, but what else are we supposed to do? I have enough supplies. Um, 
because who knows this is going to be a full-blown apocalypse. <laughs> um, but we'll see. Day five, I believe, of quarantine. It's at least a nice day out. I'm not sure what else, but at least it's a nice day. Not sure what day it is, um, but I did a food run. Um, they are rationing. <laughs> that is something that never actually happened in any part of my lifetime. <clears throat> I never thought that they would come to this, but... Another beautiful day in quarantine, but <clears throat> I think my allergies are acting up. I don't know how many days it's been since I <coughs> last updated anybody um, what I'm dealing with, <coughs> but <coughs> what the <coughs> what the fuck is this? <coughs> this isn't supposed to be any <coughs> this type of symptom. What the fuck is wrong? <coughs> God, <coughs> I should grab water. <coughs> this isn't good. <coughs> Hold on. <coughs> I just <coughs> just got off the phone with somebody. The one of the only doctors left, at least where I'm at. There's no chance left. There's no chance at all. <coughs> They're called like. They call it a pig agency, you know? I don't know what they're gonna do with me. <laughs> if I lost everybody. This is the only thing I have to remember. Why did it come down this way? Everything failed us. Everyone failed us. Everyone failed us. We were left to get killed. I don't want to be taken out here. I don't want to be taken out. I don't want. I don't want to die this way. This is not how I wanted to go out. It's spreading. It's it's getting worse. Everything's getting worse. I hallucinated before I got back on and just show what's going on. I hallucinated. I I saw people with masks. It was it was hazy. It was they were they had needles, they had everything. They were gonna take everything away. I don't know what to do. Sorry mom. I'm sorry everybody. <laughs> oh my god. <clears throat> <laughs> I'm sorry guys These things are gonna take control They're gonna take me It's gonna be quick I'm gonna fall asleep and I'm not gonna wake up That's all I can do at this point
Great job, uh, Faith. Great job. Thank you so much. Uh, um, next up, um, an actual interview with Faith, which was Oladari Attaboy's uh, cell phone video, was to interview somebody uh, going through uh, the pandemic. Uh, Oladari Attaboy is a filmmaker and a photographer, always looking for chances to film and shoot stills. Um, so let's check out an interview that he shot of Faith. Hi, I'm Faith Muse. I go to CCAC South, um, and I take the cinematography course. I'm also uh, an artist, well, artist. Um, I love taking photos on my phone because I am broke as hell. And I also like to do special effects and walk in cemeteries for fun. So quarantine has made me feel depressed as all hell. I was diagnosed with clinical depression in 10th grade, and I had one hell of a time trying to manage it throughout those years. And when I finally left high school, I was able to finally come to terms with it and control it without medication. And now it's knocked me back down. Some days are harder than others, obviously. Some days um, I've been having trouble trying to just get out of bed and actually be productive. make myself more productive. Um, a lot of art. Um, I recycled a lot of my old canvases that I just didn't like the quality of painting of. I finished a bigger painting of a all-seer type magical character. Um, I do a lot of walking around the neighborhood. I'm kind of grateful to have a cemetery right by me and I've been doing a lot of art and I've been able to actually get back into a lot of hobbies I love like cooking, more art, obviously, and just all around enjoying nature as it should be. I've been able to breathe easier since people have not been driving. <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun with that, that aspect, I should say. What is one thing I miss since this all started? I definitely miss having my friends that I've come to know and love um, for these two years. Um, this whole year has been um, one of up and down. I left some of the people that I knew in high school. I decided to drop them. But I found out I've had better friends at this campus. And not being able to see them in person and not being able to hang out with people really have knocked me down to a point where I don't want to be again. But it that's one thing I do miss. And once everything starts to reopen, or at least open enough, I want to go out with coffee with everybody and just hang out again. I think going forward from this, I think it's gonna affect me in the future by knowing that I've lived through something like this. And I hope that we don't have to deal with this ever again. I mean, it's only bound to happen. It's bound to happen again because history repeats itself. But I hope to like, knowing me effectively, I know it's kind of made me a stronger person knowing that if I can make something through this, like make it through something like this, I can make it through anything. Um. And I hope as a society we can learn to learn from this situation and how we've been so ignorant. I hope we can learn from this situation. And me personally, I've learned from this to be obviously stronger than I have been before. is said and done. I wanna see everybody that I've come to call my friends um, on campus. Um, I wanna see my coworker again. My one coworker, he would always throw tomatoes at me when we were working and we would just throw stuff at each other. Um, I wanna be able to see my friends again, go out to, for lunch, just get to all together and just <laughs> have fun again. Whether it be we were driving at night through town or um, getting ice cream and sitting in the middle of 
Point State Park, you know. We would just have a good time, and that's what I hope on doing. Then I'll take my trip down uh, down south. Yeah, have a good time. See you guys. Um, see you when everything's all over. Okay. Uh, great, great job, Oladary. Um, so that's your little double shot of faith. <laughs> Um, you get her for her acting and then you get her for real too, to see how she really feels about it. So, uh, great. Coming up next, let me just pull up who our next person to hear from is. Delia Listina is a 17 year old college